About a month back, 25 days ago as of recording, I uploaded the final video of my series Davy Explains on Halloween Day. As a quick recap, Davy Explains is a digital slash analog horror about the devil, and how he tricks a 17 year old into doing his bidding by using past incarnations of his own soul to coax him into selling his soul in the present. Yeah, it's a little complicated, you just kinda gotta watch it. <laughs> But ever since the view count on the series has stagnated in the following days, so I figured this is as good a time as any to breathe one last breath of life into it before I let it sit and work on something else. Um, this entire video is a behind the scenes video of that, so if you have not already seen that, go watch it. it this entire video won't make sense otherwise. Um, you don't have to watch the whole thing, just acquaint yourself with it and come back when you're done. All good? All right, let's begin. The story itself was actually a lot harder than you would assume to completely come up with because it ended up going under numerous rewrites and was not actually solidified until the first video with Dale Carpenter in it was finished. Up until that point, there was no complete concrete plot and that made actually making the video really hard because I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. I just know what I like to do and wanted to emulate it in uh, my own way. The original cut of the script is completely different in almost every single aspect from the one that ended up getting made into the video and I completely scrapped it because I didn't really like how it was turning out and the person that I was working with didn't want to produce it, but at that time I had already created the mask for the villain of the original series, which was going to be like a tribalist hillbilly type. Um, it was based off of this image here from the game Darkwood, and I wanted to make a burlap sack with antlers made of wood coming out of the side but I couldn't figure out where to get the antlers from and how to design it because I'm not a costume designer or anything so I just made the mask put eye holes in it and didn't really do anything with it Later that week, after I had decided that I wasn't going to use the original cut of the script, I was rather upset with myself, actually, because I had spent a lot of time doing it. I had gone out and actually recorded about 20 minutes worth of footage, and it was all for nothing. So just to prove to myself that I could do something that, you know, looked good, looked scary, I took the mask that I had made, took a hat that I had lying around, and took a round pinata that I had made in school, and I put it on my couch across the room, and I took a picture of it. Um, the picture is on screen right now, actually. And then I edited it all up and made a little, a little ghoul, a little goblin out of it, just, just to prove to myself that I could do it. I ended up being really happy with how it turned out and that gave me the inspiration that I needed to actually make something happen and I told myself that I was going to have this video out by the end of the summer um, or you know I, I'd explode and die. <laughs> Whilst I did finish the first Dale Carpenter video by a little after the end of summer, I didn't really have anything else to do with it. So what I did is I sat back, I wrote up an entire new script in about an evening, and then redid the ending of the original video to fit the script that I had written. I uploaded that to the channel, and then I unlisted it immediately. <laughs> and got to working on the first video in the series, the Whatever Happened to Party Up is that one. Um, that was the working name for it, anywho. It's now the disturbing disappearance of Party Up is, but the working name was different. Um, that video got finished, um, it got finished in about a week and a half, but the beginning of it was made 
a long time ago and was repurposed for this actually because I started the video I got to uh, the first recording of you know the meat of the video after the intro and I just kind of gave up on it so I, I dusted it off I restarted it and I finished it with um, you know help from some friends and you know I just I kind of blew through it the first part of this video that I ever made was the original screenshot because I told myself that if I couldn't make the screenshot look good that I wasn't going to do the rest of the video um, if I can find it I have a template that I used as a very early proof of concept that never ended up getting used but I really liked so the cool math games one was made after to kind of expand on the topic and make it look more realistic um what i put in deliberately and nobody has actually realized thus far is even though there's the ad in the bottom right corner there is another ad in the top of the screenshot for um I don't have it in front of me, but it's like the annoying orange app or something, something like that. I'll have it on screen. Um, that is in reference to another video by this YouTuber. I don't remember their name right now. Um, and they're kind of doing their entire channel is exactly what this first video is, is, you know, convincing somebody or a group of people of something that doesn't actually exist. And I kind of wanted to pay homage to their uh, work because their videos acted as the framework for my video showing that hey that's not an obscure topic somebody can actually do that and make it look good so you know thank you for that you're not watching but you know thanks from there I bounced around and did different videos in different orders um, first I completed the disturbing radio broadcast video then I did the David Zatura video then I did the Lindsay Spades is missing on the day that it was posted. That I did how it's been going. That I did. You deserve closure. Um, the titles of these videos have been changed since they were originally posted um, because I saw that there was a way to get more traction on the videos, and so the titles are different than what they used to be. But I put the original titles in the description, except for finale because finale was just finale. Um, but yeah, I, I bounced around and did them all out of order because it, uh, I figured that I'd do the thing that I wanted to do because I would have more passion to do it and I'd get it done faster other than forcing myself to do it in order because that's the like right thing to do, you know? Um, but really, all I did was the first thing first and the last thing last, and that was pretty much it. Everything else was just bouncing around and doing everything. Um, I gotta say, the hardest video to make was probably the Duncan Delary video, the Inhumanly Human, um, because it, it's more of like a like like sketch horror, if that makes sense. It's like 45 second clips that are all strung together, and I really like how it turned out in the end, but it was just like an inconceivable task at the time. Um, because I knew what the story was in my head, but I, did, I had no idea how to get it across. Um, one of the best scenes in that video, I think, is the scene where he's uh, browsing over the internet. I really like how that turned out. Um, but it was completely impromptu too in my editor. Like, I literally just sat down and created the website as I was thinking of it in my head. It's completely sporadic and a horrible way of writing things, but it it worked. And I got an uh, almost 13 minute video out of it that ends up probably being my favorite out of the, the, the three videos. Well, four if you include Finale because um, I didn't explain it very well, but the last video, Finale, is the final of the four um, on the drive. That's what it was supposed to be, anywho. Um, it doesn't really matter, I just figured I'd point that out. 
Another thing I wanted to note is that this series is completely over. There are going to be no more installments in this series. And I didn't think about making more. I thought about making amendments and additions, but at the time of recording, which it can always change, truth be told, but there will be no more episodes. This was always meant to be 10 episodes long, and it will not get any more updates. Um, I just said that it was always intended to be 10 long, but I, I, I lied. Um, it was actually originally supposed to be 11 long, because before I had started the series, I decided that this was not going to be an ARG, but I was going to hide one secret video by putting one letter in the descriptions of every single video, with the last video having an empty URL that you'd fill in using the other letters from the other descriptions. Um, I kept that in, that's still there, but I combined two videos together because I realized that it wasn't enough for its own episode. Um, originally, the How It's Been Going video was supposed to be one which is just the monologue at the end, and then another that is just exploring the woods and seeing that the the radio isn't there, but there just wasn't enough content, so I, I crammed them into one, made them one cohesive piece, and then just put two letters in the last episode. Um, you can still solve it and everything, but, you know... Um, another thing I want to touch on in this video is how much I truly reused from things that I, I had already made. Um, a lot of things in this series are things that I had either lying around or things that I had created for completely different purposes but repurposed for this. Because, you know, if you steal from yourself, you're not really stealing. It's not plagiarism. Um, the profile picture of the whole shebang is actually an old piece of art that I made, but never really did anything with. Um, I just thought it looked cool, and I thought that it was unique enough to use for myself. Um, so that's where that came from. And so did Lindsay Spade's profile picture. Um, Lindsay Spade's profile picture is actually a pixel art of um, a mannequin that I, I had done a really long time ago um, for a game that I had in mind um, and never went anywhere. It was pretty much just, just that that it got done, but you know. During that same like game making phase, I have the um, Save the Buddy game. Um, that's an actual game that you can play. I'm not gonna to, like show you how to get there but um it's out there and it's an actual game that i just repurposed for this because it fit with the vibe that i was going for and it you know it's my own thing so yeah <laughs> the footage at the end of the Dale Carpenter video where they're walking up the stairs is actually reused from a different video, the Rest in Peace President Devin video. Um, it, the, the original cut of that video was supposed to be a lot more disorienting, but I ended up dumbing it down a little bit to make it easier to watch because I, <laughs> it was, it was really chaotic and you couldn't get the point across so I, I really dumbed it down and that was just a piece of footage that I didn't end up using so I reused it for that because it you know it got the point across it worked um I also reused footage in the um how it's been going video at the end there when I um, suddenly jump from being at the beach to like this forest area it's if I'm being completely honest it's literally just because I ran out of footage but there was more to here so I, I put that there um it does have floor significance I figured you know I, I reasoned its way in but I don't know it's not extremely important and it was just kind of I ran out of footage um truth be told you know, you made it this far in the video, you deserve to know that much. Speaking of making it really far into the video, I have to commend you for making it this far as is, because uh, it's really just me rambling, and I know that, you know, almost nobody's going to make it this far, but I feel like I can actually get into the meat of why I did this, because 
if you didn't care, then you would have left a while ago. And so I can actually get into, you know, the more the more deeper aspects, because if you're here, then you're going to stay along for the whole thing. And I deeply appreciate it. You know, I, I that's what every YouTuber says ever. But I really appreciate you if you've gotten this far because i don't know feels like a lot of doing youtube is screaming into the void and hoping the void responds um and most of the time the void does not respond so hey if you've made it this far send a comment like the food. i whatever man just do the youtube things it really means a lot to me even if i don't respond or whatever i read every single comment and they they, they really do mean something to me but um anywho the the entire reason for this is that i i really wanted to make something just because i had I I don't know. There's there's like a little a little worm in my brain that requires that I, I do stupid artsy fartsy crap once in a while. Um for for sense of uh fulfillment, I suppose. Um <laughs> I I this is just something that I've always wanted to do, something that um I, I would consume night after night and just like get absorbed into these things. And I wanted to be able to provide that for other people the same way it was provided for me, um, especially on a free basis. Like, something that wasn't locked behind a paywall or a movie theater or a subscription service. Something that you could literally just turn the lights off in your room, go on your phone or your computer, and just enjoy. Because that was my entire childhood, pretty, essentially boiled down to an essence um a lot of the 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 most fond memories i have are based in stories and how you know i i that's at this point in my life right now that's pretty much all, what i want to do with the rest of my life is tell meaningful stories um this was my first forte into there because i figured i had to start somewhere um every single person on the planet has to begin and so i just you know it's just throw your hat in the ring and give it give it a whirl um you know I, it's not perfect this isn't you know shakespeare this isn't beautiful by any stretch of the imagination but the thing um that i keep holding on to is that it's mine you know this is something that i get to call my own and i you know i i suppose i i can give myself like the the crown of being an artist you know it doesn't matter how big or small the the work is it's work and it's public and anyone can go watch it um you know i was a little worried about uh showing other people it like like telling other people about it people that i know in real life and whatnot because it's just like i don't know i guess it's it's not my thing this is like something i enjoy in private and you know like my mom and my dad wouldn't wouldn't understand it and i don't think they'd appreciate it or anything so it's not like i told anyone about it but you know it, it i don't know there was a lot of man hours that went into it and even if it's not like great i i don't know i just wish that there were there were eyes on it because that was my biggest fear going into this that i was going to to make this all and then nobody was going to watch it and i gotta say it it got more views than I thought it was going to, but it, I don't know. I, the way that YouTube works is that everything like gets a lot of views in like the first 12 hours that it's posted and it stagnates and then it like never gets any views again. Um, and especially on this YouTube channel, this one that I'm posting on, um, I feel that a lot of the stuff that I'm not proud of is the stuff that gets all the views. And you know it that doesn't feel good you know when you make something that you you actually are proud of and nobody cares then i make a stupid um lario compilation or i clip uh moist critical and that gets 
a third of a million views, you know? But nothing that I actually want people to see gets shown. And so I wanted to make something that is both something I'm proud of and something that other people like. And from what I've seen, I on the comments, everything is very positive. Um, but it's just like, I don't know. If, like, it doesn't, it doesn't validate the, the, the time put into it, you know? And I don't, I don't know. It, it, it feels a little self-absorbed and doing art shouldn't just be for other people to see it, but it's just, I don't, I don't know. It's a little, it's a little discouraging. Uh, especially, like, I, f I don't know, I felt really good uh, when it was put out, and I still feel really good about it, but I just, I don't know, it, it's fighting an uphill battle. Like I said before, screaming into the void and hoping the void responds. Um, yeah. <laughs> Another reason that I made this is because a lot of what happens in my daily life and people I know's lives in the bigger humanity the world whatever is I feel like whatever happens was going to happen without me um like it doesn't matter if there is my support or my objection to any one given thing because it, it's based off of either somebody else or a community that I'm either not a part of or too small of a part of to mean something and so the same way that there were all of these people that inspired me beforehand I wanted to inspire somebody else to essentially just do what I'm doing right now um cuz you know you you look at everything all over the world and uh, you know I'm not trying to get political or anything but like you look at everything that happens all over the world and a lot of it feels at least to me as if it were to happen with or without you and you don't really play a big enough part in it to affect it so by making something that has like you know deep meaning and quality at very least to yourself then you can kind of learn to live with that with that messiness um and i gotta say well like the highest honor in my head that I ever could have possibly gotten out of this isn't like accolades or awards or whatever. Never would I, <laughs> I even imagine that, that that this would get it. But I just, you know, like I thought the 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 biggest award that I could get is a video essay. Literally, just someone like talking about what I made and and discussing it because that would have shown that that my work took up a significant portion of that person's brain long enough for them to make a video talking about it to other people and it doesn't even matter like the quality it's just you know i would look at these horror things especially horror but some others and just get completely enveloped in these worlds and spend hours and hours just like tossing it over in my head and I wanted to do that for somebody else because it feels to me that it doesn't matter what I do, somebody else is going to do this if I don't do it first, so I might as well try, you know? Um, you know, I just, I, I wanted to give these emotions to other people because they're so strong in myself and I want other people to feel that way based off of what I can create um cause I, you know a lot of people say imitation is a serious form of flattery but but like uh, I don't want to say obsession but like that, that level of devotion to an idea that you see in like Five Nights at Freddy's like <sighs> Even if you don't like the writing or you don't like any of it, it 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 stuck in your head long enough to make you to 
force you to think about it. And that's just, you know, I, I, I wanted to capture that, and I still want to capture that. Um, but if nobody really sees it, then, you know, I can't. I can't influence other people <laughs> if they, number one, don't look at it, and number two, don't want to be influenced. So, it's, you know, it's all that in a bag of chips. Um, I will continue to make more projects in the future like this, but, you, you know, it's, I don't know. It, it'll be different than this. It'll be something completely different. I already have something in mind. Um, nothing started. There's no due dates or anything. There's nothing coming out in the immediate future. But it's just something that my normal um, comedy persona can't can't give. Is that thought-provoking message that I really love in certain kinds of media that you you just can't find in other places and i'll keep doing comedy stuff because i do like that but i like it in a in a superficial way that's more so like having um a little like having a little candy or something there's like Ta there's like a little candy tab which is like the comedy content and then you know this more savory gourmet dish of my other work that isn't just about tasting good but about you know being flavorful and complex and reeking of 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 passion while the comedy stuff is just kind of like you eat it and then it's and then it's over um and so you know i i can't see myself doing comedy forever but i can definitely see myself doing these kind of stories forever and it'll it, hopefully it'll branch out and whatnot but you know only only time will tell and it's you know completely up in the air what will happen but hopefully i will be able to continue to do this but it really depends on whether people want to see it or not because <laughs> you know it's, it's it's an unfortunate future but i do believe that if for some reason i don't acquire acquire that 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 zing that gets people to stay and come back again and and watch your stuff that that won't happen but hopefully it will um you know call it wishful thinking call it whatever but i don't know hopefully this is the beginning of a wide um career in this hopefully this is i don't know truly this is what i want to do um i don't know what <laughs> And yes, I, I'm sorry that this kind of kind of rambles a little bit, and I just kind of talk about whatever I want to. But I don't know. Tis the nature of this entire project, really. Is the entire story is pretty much just a kid alone in his room, you know, falling apart and and melting at the seams, basically over himself, and. That's not what I meant originally, but I, I suppose I, I see myself in this in the character, you know. Um, I am I, you know I I am playing a character, but a lot of a lot of the of Davy is pretty much just me, and, and I don't know. A, a lot of characters are are slices of their authors. I suppose you see that a lot in in media and that's no different for me i see myself a little bit in every single character in that entire story but mostly just just davy because i don't know he's just like a kid he's just like a guy and that's all what that's all i wanted him to be but i i i see myself in that and therefore it's like i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm I'm trying not to ramble, but I'm I'm still rambling. Um, I, I suppose at the end of the day, this video isn't really for people to watch, because I've I've already come to the terms that nobody's gonna make it this far. So I'm just going to talk until I I run out of things to talk about, really. Um, 
because this is this video is for me. This video is just to get more word out about the the series and get a few people to watch it. But I know that little to nobody's going to make it this far into video, so it doesn't it doesn't matter what I say, and so I I can just you know blabber about what what it truly means to me because I, not you know no for lack of a better term nobody cares um <laughs> uh, and you know that that also is a theme that i explore in there the fact of of nobody caring really and how like davy's kind of doing his own thing he's in his own his own turmoil that's unique to him and nobody shares that experience with him and in, in that sense he's alone even though there are there are multiple other people there it's it's nothing that anyone else could really get behind and i i purposely put that in there because that's something i i relate to of you know i my problems aren't unique to anyone else but you know nobody else is going to look out for me if i don't look out for me so i i've got to do that above everything else but it's not like there's a step-by-step -step guide to being a person um so you kind of need to really hear everyone's opinion and then weed out what's wrong because at the end of the series when he's t he's talking to himself basically and he's talking to a past incarnation of himself and he's being told what to do it's up to him whether he chooses to take it or not because he's the only one that can and i feel like that is a lot of life is hearing everyone's opinion and then determining what the correct option is for your circumstances but it's not like there's a, a score or a big number that tells you if you're succeeding or you're failing you just kind of need to feel it out because it's all subjective and you know i will let you determine what happened at the end of the series yourself but whether he did give in to the scarecrow or not what truly is the best thing for him to have done you know is it better for him to have given in to it and prolonged the cycle of suffering to you know appease other people or is it better for him to have done his own thing and and rejected the path laid out for him against everyone's wishes because there is no true best or a worst ending here and it's all an area of gray because every rule has its exceptions and there is no correct or wrong way to go here and i, I find that is a little scary um all of these people bathed in uncertainty and nobody is correct in any method almost everyone in this entire story are very bad people actually including davy himself but it's whether it's the right option to listen to these people that's define you it's you know the actions make the man and so you know a, a lot of this is that um sins of the forefather and just you know judgment calls i suppose trying to get through your own story while essentially being the only one there and every single piece of advice has its ups and its downs and nobody really knows what they're doing and so you you get that that helplessness that feel that whatever you do is not going to be the correct option or it doesn't matter what you do because forces outside of your control are going to dictate whether you win or lose 
Um, you know, I, I, not, not to get all deep out of, out of freaking nowhere. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is what goes through through my head when I make these, and I don't know. I, I do worry that sometimes when people talk to me, I, I give off the 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 aura of some air-headed buffoon that doesn't have a whole lot going on, but. It's just hard to articulate these things. It's hard to put these into words, and therefore making art is uh, a much better way to do it because I can't transfer my thoughts into your head. I can only deconstruct them into their basic building blocks via language and then rebuild that or no, you have to rebuild that in your head using the blocks that I gave you, but you don't know how the blocks fit together, you just know how I describe them fitting together. So really I'm describing a bunch of emotions, and then you're taking your emotions and applying them to what I've said. So I can't get my point across unless I'm extremely specific and we have all had very similar responses and even then i still can't get that point across because we've all had different experiences um but if i use a visual and an auditorial medium that bridges a lot of that connection because there are less assumptions made because you can physically see what i'm trying to portray and there is a lot less guesswork in you understanding the emotion that I'm trying to get across. And so that is another reason why I really like this, the, this medium. After it's all said and done, I'm pretty much just a kid doing kid things and, and being myself and trying to cope with this disease that we call being a person um doing the doing the best i can i suppose and and trying different things trying different paths and trying to navigate and i hope that by conveying what i feel other people can feel the same way that I've felt and get enjoyment out of that um, but you know I can't force anyone to do anything and it doesn't really matter how long I try so might as well you know blab about nothing for an hour in hopes that somebody sees that 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 a huge video and thinks what the hell I'll get I'll give this a shot and while that's not a future that is probable, it's something that that you know makes me happy to think about. And so you know, give it give it a little a little attempt, because I don't know, trying is half the battle. And I guess you know you see those stupid posters that um, teachers hang up in classes like you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And while it's true, it's still like really corny, and it's just I don't know. After this, I'm gonna shut up about it, but I figured I'd give one last obscenely long take at it before I completely marked it off because I just want to and nobody can stop me. All they can do is not pay attention to me and that's the most they can do, but this is going to be up and you can't do anything about it. I don't know. It's just, you know, it, it, it's it's comforting knowing that there might be a person that cared. Um but it's it's whatever. I don't I I don't want to like sit here and be all sad because I don't that's not enjoyable for anyone. And frankly, nobody cares if I'm sad, you know. <laughs> Y'all got your own problems and you don't want to hear about my problems and I understand that but I can take my problems and turn them into fake interesting problems and then assign them to my fake character and send them off into fake character land and maybe you'll care uh, a little bit um, <laughs> uh, 
you know, that's not to say that this is like a vent piece or anything. It's not, but it's just, I don't know. All, all of this is, is, is navigation through, uh, ways of life and how that all, that all goes together. Um, and that's not all that this is about. This is just what comes to mind right now as I'm as I'm recording this. Um, there there are plenty of other things. Um, there's also you know there's the strong religious theme. Um, I chose the religious theme because religion is just something that is a objectively scary. I gotta say, um, and b just something that I've been fascinated with because it's just uh, like it's so much different than anything else because the Bible was written in one language and then translated and translated and translated a hundred different ways and interpreted a hundred million different more to the point where you have this amalgamation of probably millions of different people all trying to play essentially a really long game of telephone until you have this book of, of conflicting ideas and stories and morals and whatnot and there's nothing in the world that can compare to it there's nothing that's so highly um contrived over that you can get that level of rating out of it and so it's so interesting how these people react to each other and how you know the christian faith is a thing that operates within itself and whatnot and so forth um that i just want i wanted to explore it from an area that isn't just, you know, like, ooh, boo, religion bad, or ooh, boo, religion good. Um, I wanted to take, you know, a, a, a backdoor route to it, per se, and talk about it as if it were, as, you know, as if it were authentical and the classical tales of people making deals with the devil and the devil appearing to people in their hour of need and, and offering them things if that was in a modern setting because you know you hear stories about these kinds of things but all of them are from from eons past a really long time ago and i thought what if that happened in the modern day um, that's actually where the name of the motel comes from. The hotel that burns down in the second video. Um, the Cross Mother's Motel, because of the old urban legend that the crossroads were like a weak point between ethereal realms, and that if you went to the crossroads, wherever you lived it would be the easiest point to interact with uh spiritual beings usually the devil but sometimes other other beings in other religions like greek rome etc um that, that that would just be a fitting name for the for the motel um and that is not to say that this world that i that the, uh, the Dave Explains takes place in is a purely Christian one where the Christian faith is the the overarching theme and nothing else is true, but um, Christianity is a big part of it. And I like I gotta say, I plan on elaborating on the um, system of faith in a different project that may or may not come out any time in the next year two years whatever but it is not just like basic christianity and so when you watch it i i would keep that in mind because this was never contrived as just oh the christian devil and the christian god it is something entirely and there are demons and there are gods and there's whatnot 
and I, I, I can't really get into it because I want to explore this in its own series, but just just keep that in mind, I suppose. It's something to, to toss over. Um, another thing that I wanted to do with this series is I wanted to make um, probably one of the first digital horror series on the internet because I've I've been saying this for a long time but the the contrived analog horror style of um, series that have come and gone is it's overstated it's welcome at this point and that's not to say that analog horror is bad but it is to say that I want to see people explore other kinds of storytelling that aren't analog based because I, there's just only so much that you can do with that format and that's not to say that I haven't even um, entertained the thought and you know that might be something that's that's up and coming actually that is an idea of making an analog horror series but I wanted to make a digital analog or a digital horror because it's just I feel like it's time for that series to take off it it's time for that that genre of horror to take off because it really has not yet and I think it's I think it's about time that that movement starts um, not to say that you know I'm the catalyst of this movement or anything <laughs> but it's you know, it's just what I want to see on the internet, and if nobody else is going to make it, guess I got to get my hands dirty, you know? Um, and that's why there's a lot of um, compression and JPEG artifacting. You know, I love me some JPEG crust, yummy yummy in my tummy. Um, but these themes are, you know, represented... Um, not only because it, it goes with the, the, the series and what the vibe I wanted for it was, but it's also just, like, proving that that's a thing that, that, that can work. Um, because I, I also thought to myself, there must be a reason why this isn't bigger. There must be a reason why digital horror isn't a thing that um, is feasible and has series under its belt. Um... And I couldn't really find any. <laughs> um, I'm sure it'll happen eventually. I, I think it's inevitable at this point. Um, but it, it'll get there. And when it gets there, it'll be... It'll be... Uh, splendid. Mm, you know, after all... Uh, if you've genuinely made it this far into the video, I, I thank you kindly. Um, I figure this is about where I should stop blabbering, but if you skipped to the end of the video just to hear what I would be saying, um, if you haven't already, please go check out my frickin' series. It's on the screen, it's in the description, it's in the comments. Go watch it, please! That's what this whole video's about. Go look at it. Go look at the thing I did. I poured a lot of effort into it. I would appreciate it. Please go do that. Um, and for the people that have stayed through the entire almost 50 minutes, I thank you greatly. And um, if you have any questions, ask them. I will respond to every good question that I get. Just send them. Doesn't matter. Send it. Talk to me. Dude, talk to me. Everyone is what? Talk to me. I, I want to hear it. Do it. Go ahead. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Thank you for, thank you for being there. Thank you for being you. And, I don't know, share this video to other people. Talk about my series. Let them know. Pick up stream, whatever. YouTube things, whatever, man. I'm, I'm outie. Thank you all. And, and keep on chugging. <laughs>